Hello, and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're going to look at using the Bravo Throttle Quadrant with the Fly-By-Wire A320. Now, in this specific video, we're going to focus solely on the axes and configuring those to try to keep this one short. When we up sped now next, you'll notice I'm on 09.12.26, and I am running the dev version of the fly-by-wire. Now I've labeled mine 0.7.4 dev, uh, but that's just because the current stable version is 0.7.4, and I have the current dev version as of today, March 22nd, 2022. Okay, so we're gonna head on over to our controls and we're gonna find our Bravo throttle quadrant. Now with the new version, there are two sections. There's the Bravo switches and the Bravo throttle quadrant. We're gonna focus solely on getting our controls operational. Now, button nine, 10, 11, and 12, those are known as the Boeing reversers. I'm actually going to use the detents, so pushing it down, similar to how the throttles go into the detent in the 320. 22 and 23 is the trim wheel. Uh, I use elevator trim position and we increment and decrement by 0 0.005 uh, because these are radians. Uh, now this is a fly-by-wire, so maybe it doesn't matter, but I always leave those on my Bravo. 25 that is so 24 is the first axi detent so you see that come on when you go all the way down we're not using it 25 is the second axi which we have nothing mapped to it 26 this is where we're going to get into explaining how we do reverser on this one for switched on i send the throttle one decrement with a parameter of five uh, i send it five times and then when the switch comes off I send the throttle one cut event. Really, it's just a bunch of copy and paste, uh, though you can't really copy and paste, so it's do it, execute, put in a pause, do it, pause, do it. I leave this button mode as normal, not modified, that way it doesn't go on and off and do weird flaky stuff. Okay, throttle one cut, simple event. Done, that's all we're gonna do. You're gonna see on 27, we do the same for throttle number two, the decrements and the cut. 28, that's the bottom of this uh, axis. Nothing's assigned, so nothing there. On button 29, I still have the auto throttle toga event. Obviously that doesn't matter in this plane. Uh, you'll probably wanna remap it. I haven't gotten to that part yet. I wanted to focus on the axes, the throttles, and keep this one short. So you see nothing else is assigned. Spoilers is where we're going to start off and do something special. Because we want the spoilers to be able to arm, turn the arm off, and control the range, uh, we've assigned three events. The first two, I went with a scripted event, which is mapped to the axis. So to do this, we went to add event, scripted event, and then we added our condition and added our actions. So looking at this one, you'll see that the condition was to find our local devices, our Bravo throttle quadrant, and this is our Y axis. And these are gonna show you zero to 100 when we're using these values. So I set it so that when it is greater than 95, and I made this the higher priority, but when this is 95, it is going to set the spoilers to zero. So it's gonna make sure they're in the zero slot. It's gonna wait 100 milliseconds, and then it's gonna send the spoilers arm event. Now I've made this successfully work every time. Uh, so this seems to be the good combination of events. Seems like if you try to just do the arm on off, if I didn't set the spoiler, sometimes it didn't take. So we've gone with this, seems to work like a charm. So here I've decided when I move it back, just a little bit off the top, so it'll be less than 94, but higher than 85. We're gonna send the spoilers arm off event, wait 100 milliseconds, and we're still gonna set the spoilers to zero. So keep them on the zero. Set it to a priority of nine, so it falls below this guy. And then finally, we set up our axi. And so what we did was we moved to the position that would be past 
the 94 and 95, and I intentionally did about 200 uh, because this is 0 to 1023. Uh, that gives us actually a gap. There's the other one's probably about here where it goes to the spoilers armed off, and then here's when we start moving it. So I chose 200 to 1023, and so that would be fully extended. Again, we don't use the detent. And then we're rescaling the value to the range of the axis, minus 163083 to 16384. Our target is axis spoiler set, and we're using the axis value. Raw rescaled is on, and we've inverted the axis so that it can go low to high. And that works perfectly, and we'll show that in a moment. For throttle number one, since everything is now handled by the fly pad, which we're going to cover in a moment, all we do is set up a custom event because we need this EX1. So add event, custom axi, right? And that gets us this dialog box. So you'll see that I set up a range definition of no, because all I want to do is rescale the value from 0 to 16383. We're going to use throttle one axi. We are using the axi value, but we're using the rescaled value. Uh, so that is selected on. I then copied this event. I went to throttle number two and I pasted this event. Then I just selected it and I changed it from one to two. Same values, same everything. Also, I made sure to come in and change my labels. So I named that spoilers. I went to this one. I named it none because I have nothing assigned. I went to this one. I named it throttle one. So if you have something with a different name, it will change it. If you've left it blank, it'll use whatever the last thing it changed it to. So make sure you update those in your profiles. With flaps, uh, actually, I use the standard axi. Flaps, auto detent. Uh, full down was zero, full up is 1023, and away we go. I just moved it, hit my full up, hit my full down, clicked OK. Now that we've set this up the way we need it, let's jump back into the sim and show you how we then map it to the fly-by-wire. So now that we're looking at the pedestal, we're going to go ahead and we're going to just review real quick the first two things that we don't have to touch the iPad uh, with at all, or the fly pad. So that spoiler axis that we had set up, as you can see, as soon as we move it into this position, it moves it up. And it's just off the end stop. But as soon as it moves to the end stop, it sends that event and it arms the speed brake for us. So then we come just back off of it and it goes into the disarmed, but still flaps retracted. And then as we move further down, we've got our separate positions. And we intentionally left that extra gap so that it will get to zero in this whole area without putting the spoilers into that arm position. You have to get all the way up there. And then as mentioned, with the Bravo on the right-hand side of the rightmost axis, you're gonna find the zero, one, two, three, and four. And those actually line up great with this auto detent. Because the axis doesn't really care for the throttles, it wants it done. It's because we have to come in here to the fly pad. So when we're in the fly pad, we come to settings. We're going to come to aircraft configuration. Sorry, come to sim options. And we're going to go in and calibrate. Now, I intentionally left reverser on axi enabled. And by doing that, the fly-by-wire actually thinks the axi is full from minus 16, 383, all the way up to 16, 384. And that's why right now, even with my throttles at idle on the Bravo, it shows it right here in the middle. And that's okay because we're going to leverage the fly pad to assign everything. When we move 
down into the D10, it sent those five decrease events. So as you can see here, it has come down. And so we came to reverse full and we set this here at minus 28. Then what I did was I took it out of the detent and we went to reverse idle. And what you'll see is that we're actually at zero right here. The reverse idle intentionally putting it just at point zero zero two. And so you can also edit these values, the value to point zero zero two for the end and the start. And that way it does come out of reverse idle when we pop it back up since we don't actually have a full reverser axis. The key was on idle. And again, you can come in and you can edit these. So I wanted these at zero and zero because this comes down and perfect, it's right at zero. I moved my throttles up to where I wanted the climb detent to be. And I just align those with the line on the axis. And again, a similar type thing. This is roughly where I wanted to be. So I gave it a little bit above and a little bit of a below to give it a bit of a dead zone now you can make this bigger or smaller depending on how you feel you want your ranges. When we go to our flex, you'll notice I set those a little bit higher. So again, there's a bit of a dead zone when I come up, but we hear the click. So we know we're into flex. And then finally for toga, we put it all the way to the top. And again, you can edit these values yourself with a configuration and an end stop. So once we were done with that, it was all nice and simple to hit save and apply. So when we look at our two throttles here, we're in the idle position at the bottom, so where the detent is, so the gate stops us, and that is matching to idle in the fly-by-wire. As we bring it up and we come up to roughly where we wanted, nicely in the climb, and I went with these two uh, kind of top detent spots. Then I chose just a little bit further up. That felt about right for our flex. And then all the way goes up into toga. Click, full control. And then when we go down, you see it does those two steps, gets us into full reverse. And when we come off of the switch, it cuts it back to idle. That's it. That's all it takes to get your axes set up with the fly-by-wire and spad.next. And it's the cleanest way to do it, especially after all the changes they made with the fly pad. If you guys go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, come along next time. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.